it's your boy Trey. And I got the real King Von story documentary. So this is basically just a little documentary about King Von life, I, I think. It like it like eight minutes, so we gonna see what's um uh, might find out some stuff I ain't no use there on here. Y'all hit the like and subscribe button. We're gonna roll to a thousand. We almost at four hundred, y'all, so we gonna keep working. I appreciate all the love y'all been showing me, you feel me? And let's see what this video about. Let's get it. We just got the top from this strip of beef. See some cake and cheese, just bought a Glock. What a wool clip, what a paper. You know that, but she must do. So I'm passing through. We just got the top from this strip of beef. See some cake and cheese, just bought a Glock. What a wool clip, what a paper. On November 6, 2020, Davon Bennett, better known as King Vaughn, was pronounced dead from gunshot wounds. And this is his story. Picture a no man's land with broken windows, dark abandoned buildings, no law and order. There are carefully demarcated areas controlled by rival bands of armed militia fighting over the rubble. Nearly every night there's sniper fire. It sounds like Beirut, but in fact it's America. A creature of state, local and federal government. The product of bad politics, failed policy and official neglect. It exists unseen except by those who live there a stone's throw away from some of the most valuable real estate in our nation's third largest city. Mm -hmm. Davon Bennett grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods of Southside Chicago, from, Parkway right? Gardens, also known as O Block off of 64th, not 63rd. In the gardens, he was known as grandson, referring to his relationship with his grandfather, David Barksdale, one of the founders of the Black Disciples. It started with Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover was a high supreme gangster. David Boxdale was a devil disciple. Growing up, his life wasn't bad for what it was. Although he didn't meet his father until eight years old, due to him being locked up on and off all through his early childhood, his mother and stepdad did their best to make sure he had what he needed. Davon was an A and B student and even enjoyed playing baseball up until around high school. Growing up around poverty and violence in Southside Chicago, it's almost always inevitable to get involved in trouble. It's easy to go on the block than it is to go to school. Although he denies ever being part of a gang in his younger years, he admits to taking an interest in the street life. Davon's father would pass away and his grades would start to slip. He soon turned to crime himself, starting out just stealing bikes and other small things. But at the age of 15, he would catch his first case, unlawful carry of a firearm. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. He would spend time in juvenile detention twice before the age of 18. Missing out on most of his teenage years, he wouldn't go more than six months without finding trouble with the law. At this time, he didn't know these run-ins with the law would be small problems compared to what was coming. On May 29, 2014, a man by the name of Malcolm Stuckey was sitting on his porch with two others during a birthday party. Two men would approach him with loaded guns and open fire. Although they tried to flee down the street, Malcolm was shot in the head and died on the scene, whereas the two others involved were wounded but later survived. Initially, only one person was arrested for the crime, Michael Wade. But after more evidence rose, Davon would find himself potentially facing 100 years in prison for murder and two attempted murder charges. He would spend the next three and a half years in jail. He would have time to reflect on a lot of things. Meanwhile, he's locked up. People he's known since a kid would start to blow up off rapping. Lil Dirk and G Herbo's careers were on the rise. Although he didn't know whether he'd ever be free again, he did take inspiration from what they were doing on the outside. He began freestyling and beatboxing in jail to pass time because there was nothing else to do. Taking after his grandfather's nickname, King David, he would get the nickname King Vaughn from his cellmates who knew David and they said the way he handled himself in the street reminded them of him. In 2017, after spending three and a half long years in jail, his trial would only last five days. 
Michael Wade, who worked with the police trying to reduce his sentence, was given 20 years, while Davon, who didn't cooperate, would be acquitted of all charges, and four hours later, released back into civilian life. Wasting no time after being released, he began writing his first raps. He drew inspiration from urban novels as well as his own past experiences to write his first songs. Although spending so much time in and out of jail was something he never wanted to experience again, he admits it helped shape the person he was and made rapping about it easier. In late 2018, he began releasing music after linking back up with the now superstar Lil Durk. Lil Durk would co-sign his music from the beginning, where he even uploaded his earliest songs on his own YouTube channel to help bring attention to Vaughn's music. After the release of a few songs, he had already begun to build a fan base. Drill music peaked between 2010 and 2015 or so, and with the popularity of it decreasing over recent years, King Vaughn's captivating way of telling just about any story over a drill beat with any what story. looked like no effort at all would bring a refreshing and much needed new style to the drill scene. His early single problems had brought him some traction, but just a few months later on the last day of 2018, he would drop his single Crazy Story, which told the story of a robbery turned shootout and his life would change forever. This song would blow up almost instantaneously. Childhood friend and co-signer Lil Durk wasted no time hopping on the part two of the song after signing him to his Only the Family label. To further his career and by personal choice, he would move out of Chicago and relocate to Atlanta. In 2018, he dropped his first official mixtape titled Grandson, which featured more collabs with Lil Durk and Book of 600. But with fame and fortune almost always comes beef. It seems trouble was something that always found its way back into Vaughn's life, in one form or another. Hey, hey gang. Yeah. I was playing on the though, bro, for real. You know that shit be hurting him, for, for real. Fuck them. It seemed like every few months or so, Vaughn found himself in a debacle online with another rapper. I mean, how many times a week do we see a rapper dissing another rapper? In today's world, we see this shit all the time, especially online. And in most cases, nothing ever happens. In 2020, Vaughn would release two more projects, LaVon James and later Welcome to Oblock. The tape would peak at number 63 on the Hot 100, which is in fact very ironic. By then he had gained so much popularity, his tapes would feature big artists from all over. He was just beginning to be solidified in the rap game. Ha! And then... <laughs> And GBI investigators still here on scene. This shooting made national headlines as officials confirmed one of the three people shot and killed was rapper King Vaughn from Chicago, who was here last night with friends. What started as a fight outside of an Atlanta hookah lounge would turn into King Vaughn's fatal last moments. It has since surfaced that the entourage of people behind the shooting of Vaughn are associated with the rapper Quando Rondo. While it's nearly impossible to figure out if King Vaughn and Quando Rondo had beef of their own, they clearly ran with two different circles. Vaughn was signed to Dirk, and Quando was signed to NBA Youngboy. Because they were so close to these more experienced rappers, it's possible that the beef between Vaughn and Rondo was actually tied to the relationships with Lil Dirk and Youngboy. Although it was never really confirmed, people did believe that Vaughn and NBA Youngboy had some type of issue with each other after Vaughn posted a picture of Youngboy's ex-girlfriend. Regardless of the reason why this all started, the truth is nobody deserves to die at such a young age. Vaughn was just getting started. It's actually crazy to think about the fact that we won't be able to see what his full potential was. But one thing is for sure, music doesn't die, and his footprint will remain. That's crazy, bro. It's just taking off. Like, for real, bro. Rest in peace, Vaughn. Ciao. I really liked it, bro. I feel like it told me a few things I didn't know about King Von, like about his dad, him not being upset, hey, just a few little things. But y'all, let me know if y'all like me reacting to like documentaries about rappers like that. Like, I could do that for other people. I'll probably do one for A Boogie, somebody make one for him, or Lil Baby, or even Dark, you feel me? But, or even Polo G, you know, just stuff like that. I like reacting to stuff like that. Just be chilling. But y'all, throw me some suggestions down below. Hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know what y'all think about the video. I'm going to see y'all soon. Let's get it.